We turn our basement from looking like this and this to this. And it is making us over $30,000 a year. Want to know how we did it? Why we did it? How much we spent on it? And all the critical mistakes to avoid. Well, you clicked on the right video. Let's get it started. Here's a quick tour of the entire unit. We finished the renovation in June of 2022, and it has brought us over $40,000 since then through short-term and long-term rentals. I posted a TikTok about this unit a few months back, and one of the questions I get asked a lot is, Gary, how did you get it done for such a cheap price? No way you have got it done for this cheap. Well, I'll break down the price piece by piece for you throughout the video, so stay with me. This unit is located in the basement of our three-story, 3,600 square foot home for a dink couple like my wife and I, dual income, no kids. It was a bit too much house for just two of us. One of the reasons why we decided to convert and rent out our basement space for some extra cash. First of all, a separate entrance to the apartment is a must. I cannot emphasize enough. This is going to prevent so many awkward moments and bring you way more bookings. Think of this as a duplex or multifamily apartment building. You may see your neighbors in the parking lot or the yard from time to time, but you both need to have your own privacies. Our guests enter from the garage side back door to enter their unit, a completely separate entrance to the house. First of all, kitchen. For cabinets, we bought RTA ready to assemble cabinets from a local cabinet wholesaler. My wife and I put them up and installed them together ourselves. I kind of need a reason to justify owning all these tools. Plus it's kind of fun, adult Legos. Do make sure they are solid plywood boxes instead of those cheap fiberboard press boxes with foil veneers. You will get what you pay for. Those are pretty much recycled Amazon boxes. We spent about $1,000 for these cabinets. We also paid $600 material and labor for this remnant piece of quartz countertop. Why quartz? I explained the reasons why I would pay quartz over other options in my other video. The link to that video is down in the video description. We bought all the cabinet poles and faucets off on Amazon. They are way cheaper than those big box stores. $100 for all the handles and the faucets and install them myself. Now appliances, you can either buy scratched and dented ones or go to a local appliance dealer and buy some used appliances. I spent $1400 for a set of used commercial duty wash and dryer set, fridge and flat top range. Always get a flat top range if you don't want to get cussed out by your cleaners. And $250 for a new microwave. Bedroom. We use some of the furniture around the house that we already had. And I built this bed with some 2x8s, 2x4s, joist hangers, leftover cedar 6x6s from another job, and some cedar dog ear fence pickets. Bed here costs less than $100 in materials. Also, this room is right below the upstairs dining room. Nobody uses dining room these days anymore. Which means it has the least amount of foot traffic noise. Happy tenants, happy landlord. For all the tile work around the unit, including the basement walk-in shower, kitchen backsplash, and the tile floor throughout the unit, I paid $2,200 for the labor and $1,200 for the materials. Yes, it was $1,200. I scored all these porcelain floor tiles for $0.30 cents a square foot. It was a discontinued design and they were pretty much given away for pennies on a dollar. Do you make sure you have enough tiles left over if one day you need to make a patch or repair one day? I am an extreme case of a cheapskate sometimes. How ground and mortar are usually $25 to $30 a bag and I pay $5 a bag for mine because I try to look for deeply discounted busted bags with holes on them. To me, that's a no-brainer. Also for the bathroom, I put the bathroom fan and lights on the same switch so it makes sure the fan is on if the tenant decides to take a shower, preventing potential mold growth from shower steam. I also picked the loudest fan that I could find. It's cheaper and the tenants will likely take a shorter shower, less water usage, don't judge. Adding a laundry set is possibly the best decision we made to this unit. Combining having a full kitchen, they allowed us to attract more mid and long term tenants while charging them at the short term rate. Way less vacancies than if we had filled it with all short termers. Which is one of the reasons why we made over $30,000 a year with this unit. Three times over how much a conventional leased long term tenant would have paid. Mid term tenants like travel nurses, corporate employees on traveling gigs, or college students, which are the majority of what we've been getting, usually have a higher budget for their stay and take better care of your property than short-term honeymooners or partiers. Just saying. Everything else in this bathroom, including the vanity, mirror, toilet, and other miscellaneous items around the unit, cost us around $1,000 in materials from Lowe's, which I installed them myself mostly. There are plenty of videos on YouTube showing you how to install a vanity, toilet, or so. If you don't know how, they're actually fairly easy, and it's a great skill to have these days. For the rest of the house, a TV from one of my rentals that the previous tenant left behind, a couch from Facebook Marketplace, 
Walmart coat hangers, garage sale dishes, and cookware from Amazon or Timu, totaling $300. A separate HVAC system is also a must for a unit like this. We paid $1,200 for this mini split unit, and I installed it myself as well. It was actually pretty easy. An HVAC contractor will charge you anywhere between $300 to $500 in labor if you want to have someone else to do it for you. For every property, plumbing and electrical are like the veins and arteries for your body. You don't see them every day, but you cannot live without them. You need to treat it like a legit rental business. I like to make sure my tenants know where the breakers are and have access to them if they ever decide to plug in their hair dryer, bread toaster, and the water kettle on the same circuit and decide to run them all at the same time. I've also marked the breakers in the most foolproof way possible. If you still can't read them, I'm sorry about your parents. I had my electricians wire the rough end and it cost me $500 for the labor and the $400 for less for other materials like wires, staples, boxes, switches, and outlets. I did all the finishing and all the work myself. There are plenty of videos online showing you how to install a light, switch, or outlet. Just make sure you flip out the breakers and use your tester to double check before you do any work. And oh yeah, a second off 110 volts works better than a shot off espresso. Don't ask me how I found that out. Alright, plumbing. There are two ends of this trade, clean and dirty, which are supplies and drains. I consider myself being pretty handy, so I did all the supplies in. Thanks to all the PEX pipes and the crimp rings. So glad that I don't have to solder anything. And please, none of that shark bite crap. Save yourself a headache and do it right the first time. Crimp rings are way cheaper and more reliable than shark bite fittings. For the draining part, I highly suggest you to hire out. For basement plumbing, you most likely need to cut open the concrete slab and install the sump pump. Unless you know all the pipe diameters and the venting requirements. But still, this may be the most expensive part of the build. And trust me, you want to make sure you get this part done right the first time. Otherwise, you'll be floating away in a sea of despair, if you know what I mean. For the sump pump, I spent about $1400 on this Liberty grinder pump. Do make sure you spend a pretty penny on a good quality grinder pump to tenant proof your property. Also, an overflow alarm is not a bad idea. So for all the fittings and materials, including the grinder pump, I spent about $1700. $1,200 on labor with my plumber. Again, I had a bunch of fittings laying around the house already, and my plumber has been working with me for a while. I sent all my plumbing jobs and tenants maintenance costs to him, and that's why I got it done for that price. Expect somewhere between two to $5,000 for the labor part, depending on where you live. If plumbing and electrical are like the veins and arteries, then the framing and the sheetrock are like your skin and bones. I spent $3,000 on labor to have my crew to frame, insulate, hang and finish the sheetrock. Again, this Hispanic crew has been working with me for the past 7 years. For a small job like this, they are okay with just charging me by day. $1200 for all the materials, including all the studs, sheetrock and the mud. $600 for all the interior doors and the main entry door, which I hung them myself. Use the paint that I already have from the leftover stash around the house from previous jobs. On another note, soundproofing is a very critical part of the construction. My wife and I do live upstairs. Extra thick 5 8 sheetrock for the ceiling, two layers of rock wood insulation. We even suspended the ceiling by cross framing down with hurricane ties in order to make rooms for all the plumbing and electrical runs, also to further dampen the noise. Sound travels through vibration. Less direct contact means less noise. That's just how physics works. All the insulation for the basement unit cost $800 in total. And here's a quick demonstration on how well it worked out. So the grand total for this entire basement ADU conversion is about $18,750. Yeah, I might have forgotten a thing or two from the original short video that I posted. Sorry. <laughs> Around $30,000 to $40,000 is what you should be expecting from a general contractor. Like I said, I have years of construction experience from house flipping and owning almost 100 doors on rentals. And that's one of the reasons why I was able to get it done for this cheap. Comment with your questions and thoughts, and until next time.